Hello, I'm Christina Duch, and I'm going to be talking about the Eastern Orthodox Church, specifically the Russian Orthodox Church in America. The Eastern Orthodox Church has its beginnings in the 11th century when they split off from the Catholic Church over political, social, and um, theological differences. They very swiftly took over the church duties in the eastern portion of Europe and spread all throughout like, the Slavic countries and eventually made their way to Russia uh, very soon after the break. Um, the Russian tradition of the Eastern Orthodox Church is very strong. It was a very big part of their culture for all of their history since then. And then, uh, beginning in 1794, uh, they sent eight missionaries to Alaska, and that marked the first inroads of the Eastern Orthodox Church in the New World. Um, their starting point was the Kodiak Islands, specifically the main one, Kodiak Island. Um, off the coast of Alaska. Uh, they, of course, immediately began ministering to the immediate area, specifically the Kodiak peoples and the various Aleut nations. One of the most prominent and remembered members of this expedition was St. Herman, who was, uh, again, like I said, one of those first eight. He is also one of three Americans who is canonized by the Orthodox Church. Um, he was known for running the school for the native children on the island. He taught various uh, gardening and farming techniques to the local people there. And he was universally beloved for his humility and compassion. And uh, the seminary that they named after him is still in existence today. It is the St. Herman Theological Seminary. And it was originally intended to be um, a place where they could teach local people, native people, to be the priests in their own churches. So they wouldn't have to rely on Russia for everything. Um, uh, elsewhere in Alaska and Sitka, which is known as the Russian heart in America, it was the center of Russian culture in America for centuries. Um, by the 1880s, when America bought Russia, uh, Alaska from the Russians, there was already a very strong presence there of the Orthodox Church. Um, the Tlingit people uh, in the area were not super receptive at first, but then over time, and especially with the inroads of new American Protestantism, they took the Orthodox Church to heart and it became as much a part of their culture as all of their existing practices. To the point where today, um, it is so much a part of their identity that almost to be Tlingit or Aleut or member of the Kodiak Islands is to be Orthodox. Um, then they, we don't see too much of the Orthodox Church in America until uh, the late 19th century, early 20th century, when the new wave of immigrants from Eastern, Southern Europe um, started really coming in through Ellis Island and the various other ports in the East Coast. A marker of this is one of the most prominent uh, bishops of the time is a man named Teton Bellavin moved his uh, base of operations from San Francisco to New York in 1905 to better serve the new wave of immigrants. Um, he is known for promoting a greater laity involvement in the church, and he convened the first All-American Council trying to consolidate the various different Orthodox churches in America under one banner. Um, one thing, of course, that shaped the nature of the Russian Orthodox Church in particular in America was the Russian Revolution of 1917. Um, and the effect that that had in America was to split the churches along three different lines. There were the pro-communism camps, the pro-monarchy camps, and then a sort of middle ground. And the middle ground was the largest. Um, they called themselves the Metropolia, which in 1970 was renamed the Orthodox Church in America and is considered its own separate governing body.